It's just, uh, it's been a partnership that I truly value because obviously the legal expertise that you provide all these homeowners and just the fact that when I meet folks and they feel like so helpless and then, and then of course through the process of meeting you and then you connecting them with me, um, it's just like one of those marriages that just really works because at the end of the day, like, you know, they just feel such a huge relief uh, yeah. with, with respect to, you know, the, the things that you do for them. And then of course, you know, me helping them as well. So it's been great. Yeah, for sure. Um, as many of you who've been watching my YouTube channel know, we are still in a COVID forbearance, but we're expecting that there's going to be tons of you people out there who are going to need some help, hopefully, you know, early summer and stuff. So um, let's just jump right in. So Mark, why don't you just tell us what areas in Washington you focus in, you work in, you know, tell us where you work. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I'm based in Tacoma and I work for Windermere Professional Partners. I've been in the business about 18 years, been doing the, the short, short sale and foreclosure uh, business for, gosh, maybe about 15 of those 18 years. So it's, it's uh, you know, got a lot of experience in that, in that with that respect. But with working with Nadia, I've been blessed to work in so many parts of the state of Washington. I worked on the coast. I worked in Bainbridge Island. I worked up on the east side. I worked, you know, in the south. So, you know, the reality is, is short sales is, is a little bit different of a monster with respect to the process. And so, of course, as a homeowner, you know, we always try and achieve the highest price in the shortest amount of time. Well, with short sales, it's a little bit more of a process than it is trying to achieve those specific goals. So I know how to work that process. And the reality is I've worked in so many parts of the state um, that ultimately I, I super, feel super comfortable doing so. So that, that was a really nice way of saying Nadia makes me drive long distances <laughs> because I refuse to give people who need help to other agents. That was absolutely, nice, nice absolutely. <laughs> So one question that I hear a lot that I know that you guys answer on your end is how does a commission work in a short sale? So a lot of people are hesitant, right, to move forward with a short sale because if you need to do a short sale, likely you need to kind of downsize and finances might not be where you want them to be. And so can you just talk a little bit about how commission is paid through a short sale? Absolutely. You know, I think that for most people, the unknown is always so much worse than what the reality is. And so when I talk to folks, of course, commission, when you're in a short sell, the bank is gonna be paying those fees. So as a homeowner, you're not even remotely coming out of pocket for any expenses. And so our goal is obviously as a homeowner to make sure that, that you incur zero costs related to real estate commission fees, period. That is, that is what a short sell is. What I, that's great. And what I always tell people is the banks know, the banks know that there's no money to pay any of that. You're not walking away as a homeowner with any proceeds of the sale because you're underwater. And so those traditional fees commission included get paid as part of the short sale by the bank. So if you're out there and you're considering doing a short sale, don't feel hesitancy to speak with an agent because that's my job. I go to the bank and I say, no, you need to pay fees so that they can kind of get out of it. Absolutely. Um, so in having worked with all these different people for all these years, what do you think makes a right fit short sell agent? What do you think the qualities of a good short sell agent? What's something that you know you feel like you bring to the table? Why are you a good fit? And then just more generally, what should somebody be looking for when they're considering choosing which agent to work with in a short sell? That's a great question. And you know, the reality is, is in real estate, people do business with those who they know, trust, and like. And that is perfectly fine when you're in a traditional real estate transaction where you might have equity in a, in a sale that you could sell the property and make money on. With a short sale, I think you really need to find folks that actually specialize and do short sales for, this, for the reason that you know, we've been down this path so many times, you and I together. Um, and so ultimately the reality is, is we know how this process works and how it's orchestrated and what the bank expects and what the bank is looking for. And so with that, just an average everyday person just doesn't have that experience to be able to know those little nuances that 
that I've been able to create and understand over 15 years of specializing in, in the short sale industry. Yeah, I think that's great. I also would say one thing I particularly appreciate about working with Mark is he's fast and he's quick. And so if you're on a foreclosure timeline or if you're just trying to get out before things get worse, you know, a lot of our homeowners like to get out before they get a public notice recorded against them. That's important to them. And so, you know, Mark and I always at the beginning of a transaction, I tell him like, Hey, here's our timeline. And he's just like within an hour, like got it on it. And, and we just go quickly. And so if, if you're someone who wants to do a short sell, chances are, even though short sales can take a little bit of time, you want to just get moving as fast as possible. So that's, that's right. always something I right. enjoyed. Um, let's talk a little bit about, so the, I guess the other thing I hear a lot is people are like, Hey, my home does not look good. It has repair issues. I don't even know if a buyer is going to want to buy this home. So if someone said that to you, like there's a lot of repair issues. I don't know if someone's going to want to buy it. What would you say to them? It's a great question. And the reality is, is we all, I think as homeowners feel like we could do better with respect to, you know, having our property, you know, fixed up a little bit more than what sometimes the reality is. But, you know, for, for me, when we talk about working with a short sale, um, it's, it's an asset, right? And so the reality is, is somebody is going to appreciate your asset. And whether you need repairs or not, the reality is, is in the car business, they always say there's a butt for, you know, every seat. And the reality is for, for homeowners, for homes, there will be a purchaser that is going to desire your property, even with some repairs that need to be taken care of. So I think as it's more important to get into the process um, than it is to worry about trying to fix up your property just so that you could, you know, have it presentable in your mind. Because we all believe that it could always be better. But the reality is, is the market will react to it no matter what. Yeah. And especially right in a short sale situation, you're not walking away with money at the end of it. So don't pour your money into a bad investment at that point, save your money, get yourself into a better living situation. I always tell people banks understand that they, if, if you don't do a short sale and you can't recover at some point, they'll take it at foreclosure, then they are going to take it in as is condition. And so that's, that falls on me. That's my job is to explain to the bank. No, no, this is the condition of the property. Right. This is the best you're going to be able to do. So we don't want to dump in money. In. As a homeowner, it's like, why do we want to pour money into a depreciated asset that you're not going to get any money out of? And so, you know, the bank, as you said, will understand what they're dealing with because they're ultimately going to get an appraisal and they're going to get an estimation of value. And that will be in line with, of course, you know, uh, the purchase and sale agreement that we provide the bank. And so, yeah, we want to make sure that you are thinking about the next steps versus putting money into a, an asset that you're not going to get anything out of. Yeah, that's great. Um, just a quick, let's just quickly talk about utilities. That's a common question that pops up. So in an ideal situation, a homeowner would continue to pay their utilities until closing. Um, it, let's say somebody comes to you and they're like, hey, I want to do this short sale. They understand the commission gets covered, their closing fees get covered by the bank, but they're like, dude, I don't think I can pay my utilities. What do you say to them at that point? Yeah, it happens pretty frequently. And the reality is, is of course, Nadia will work with the bank and see if, if there's any any way the bank can cover the utility, uh, the utilities and or a portion of the utilities. And there's been many times where we go back to the purchaser or the buyer and we ask them that uh, they have to kick in in order to bridge the gap. So that way we can actually get the property closed. So yeah, yeah that's good. So very calm. So I always at the beginning of a short sale transaction, I ask for a lot of utility coverage. Probably 50% of the time we end up with three or four, three to four hundred dollars toward the utilities. That's my job. And then Mark goes to the buyer of the transaction and says, hey, you want this home. This is what it's going to take. And so it's important for sellers to understand that um, they don't they're not going to have to suddenly come up with all the unpaid utilities. That's part of the negotiation process. I mean, we take care yeah. of it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I think those are those are mostly my main questions. Um, is there anything that you hear frequently or that you want to share with people? Um, I've talked in, in other videos about just the general stress uh, that a short sale can bring and mm -hmm. kind of what types of things can alleviate that stress. Is there anything you want to share about like what you tell people 
or, or what you've seen, I guess what I'm trying to get at is people come out of these being thrilled that they went through it. And people at the beginning of the process might not be able to see that far down the line. So do you want to just talk to me a little bit about how people walk out of this? <laughs> you know, I think I touched on it earlier is that the reality is, is when you don't know something or it's always worse than what the reality is. And so when I talk to sellers that are going through this, this process is, you know, the weight and the stress of that 900 pound gorilla on their back, because they don't know that there's actually an outcome that can be favorable for them. In the beginning, I just talk, tell them and stress like, guys, just let me, let me carry the burden. Let me carry the stress because the reality is, is, at the end of this process, you're going to feel so relieved and so thankful that, you know what, this thing is behind you and that you can move on with your life yeah. because it's really not that bad. The reality is, is at the end of the day, like, okay, they can take your property. Okay. But that's it, you know? So don't burden yourself with so much like stress because it's not worth the, the energy that you put on yourself to do so. And from start to finish, like when you get done, like that, just that relief that you feel is just so rewarding. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, I think what I want to communicate before we kind of sign off here is Mark and I truly are um, a team and we, we like to bear the burden of all the things that you don't like to do, worrying about what the bank is doing, trying to communicate with buyers, figuring out all the little details that are involved in a short sale. We like doing that. We get excited by it. We, it's, it's what we enjoy doing um, because we know we're being helpful. And so it really does relieve a lot of stress to just kind of have a team of people working for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then kind of the last thing I'll say is we are also supportive of people who want to try to fight to stay. So a lot of what I do with Mark will be like, Hey, be ready, right? We're going to try to stay in this home and we're going to do everything we can. And then if we can't, then Mark is ready. And so if you're in a situation where you're like, I'm not paying on my mortgage and I don't know what to do. You should still call Mark. You should still call me and we'll make a plan for you based on your timeline. And a lot of times I tell Mark, Hey, be ready. And then I tell him, Hey, we got to stay. Yeah. Let it go. And we, we want the best for everybody out there. And that's kind of what we're all about. So it's, no one's going to be pushing you into any sort of sale. We just want to make sure you get the best thing for you. And Mark stands by in situations where you want to stay and he's ready in case we suddenly need to do something different. So. All right. Sure. Well, thank you so yeah. much for your time. It was great to see you, Mark. Mark Bergman's information is below this video. My information is below this video. Reach out, have a conversation, um, send an email, whatever, whatever it takes to get just the conversation going. That'll help relieve some of that stress. Bye, Mark. See ya. <laughs> Bye.